Everything in life and business is about relationships. Your ability to form the right relationships with the right people at every stage of your life and career will be the critical determinant of your success and achievement. The more people you know and who know you in a positive way, the more successful you will be at anything you attempt to accomplish. Goals of any kind. You will need the help of lots of people. Who are they? You need to develop a strategy to work effectively with each group. Start with your business. Make a list of everyone who works inside and outside of your business. Your boss, your colleagues, your co-workers, subordinates, and especially your customers, suppliers, and vendors. Which of these people have a greater ability to help you or hurt you in the achievement of your business or career goals? I then point out that everyone is in the business of customer service, no matter what they call it or what they do. A customer can be defined as anyone who you depend upon for success and advancement in your job or business. A customer can also be defined as anyone who depends on you in any way. For example, your boss is your primary customer at work. Your ability to satisfy your boss will have more of an impact on your future, your income, and your career than any other single action you take. If you displease everyone else but your boss is delighted with you, you'll be safe and secure in your job. If you please everyone inside and outside your company but your boss is unhappy with you, that problem alone can short-circuit your future. One of the best strategies you can use is to make a list of everything that you believe you have been hired to do. Then take this list to your boss and ask your boss to organize this list in order of his or her priority. What is most important to your boss? What is second most important? What is third most important? And so on. From that moment onward, discipline yourself to work on your boss's top task all day long. This will do more to help you in your career than any other single decision you make. 86% of the senior executives selected two qualities as being more important for career success and advancement than any others. First, the ability to set priorities, to separate the relevant from the irrelevant. Second, it was the ability to get the job done fast, to execute quickly. There is nothing that will help you more in your career than to get the reputation for being the kind of person who gets the most important jobs done quickly and well. But the sad thing is that if you do an unimportant job very well, this could actually hurt your career, and even threaten your job. Be sure that what you're doing today is still your boss's top priority, then make a game of doing it fast. Your co-workers who also depend on your work are your customers as well. Go to each one of them and ask them if there is anything that you can do to help them. The fact is that people think about themselves and their own jobs all day long. You should look for every opportunity in your work to help people and to do nice things for others. The more the people next to you, above you, and below you like you and support you, the more you'll get paid and the faster you'll be promoted. Look for ways to be a valuable resource to the people around you and they will automatically look for ways to help you and support you when you most need it. Perhaps the most important quality you can develop for long term success in your business is that of being a good team player. To be a good team player, always come prepared to every meeting, sit opposite and in direct eye contact with the person who's running the meeting, speak early and ask questions, volunteer for assignments, and when you offer to do something, do it quickly and well so that it is clear who the go-to person is in the company. As a result, you will be given more and bigger jobs and both the authority and the rewards that go with those jobs. Take time to get to know your subordinates and the people who are below you on a corporate ladder. Offer to help them if you can. Be especially kind and courteous with them. Go out of your way to compliment them and to recognize them for their work. You will be amazed at the difference this makes in your career. In every organization, the person who knows the most people is usually the person who, like cream, rises to the top. Outside of your business, you should get involved with your industry and your industry associations. Look at the business organizations in your community. Once you've decided that it would be useful for you to be a member of one of these organizations, join up and begin attending every meeting. Here's the best strategy of all for networking. Select an important committee within the organization and volunteer to work on that committee. Once you join the committee, once you join the committee, volunteer for assignments. Even though this work is unpaid, these activities give you an opportunity to work with and perform before other key people who can help you in your career sometime down the road. The more people that you know and work with in your industry, the more doors of opportunity there are 
that will open for you when the time is right. As you read your local newspapers, make a list of the top people in your community. As you gather these names, write each of them. Write each of them. Write a letter and send them something that is non-business related. Send a copy of a small book, poem, a newspaper clipping, or anything that might be of interest to them based on what you've read about them in the papers. Each time that you see a reason to communicate with that person, drop them a note. Often, I don't get through or make direct contact, but I continue to sow seeds and sooner or later, what goes around comes around. Eventually, I will end up meeting a key person socially or in business, and they will remember that I dropped them a letter a week, a month or even a year ago. No effort that you make to expand your contacts will ever be completely lost. Some will yield results immediately, some will not yield results for many months or even years. You must be prepared to be patient. Make it a point to associate with the kind of people that you like, admire, respect, and want to be like sometime in the future. The choice of a positive goal-oriented reference group can do more to supercharge your career than any other decision you make. At every turning point in your life, there is usually someone standing there guiding you in one direction or another, opening or closing the door for you or helping you in some way. If you're really serious about being the best and moving to the top of your field, you cannot afford to spend much of your time with people who are going nowhere in their lives. No matter how nice they are, you must set high standards for your friends and associates and refuse to compromise. Your choice of the people you associate with will have more of an impact on what you become than any other single factor. The third category of people whose help and cooperation you will require are your family and friends. It is absolutely vital that you invest all the time and emotion necessary to build and maintain a high quality home life or relationship. Life problems at home distract your attention and drain your energy. They can often sabotage your career. Throughout your career, you will be required to go to what are called deliberate extremes. You will have to work long hours and often many days without breaks or vacations in order to take advantage of an opportunity or to complete a project. Be sure that you discuss these deliberate extremes in advance with the members of your family so that they understand what is happening and why you are doing it. Always treat people with kindness, courtesy and compassion. Above all, the simplest strategy is to treat everyone you meet at home or in work like a million dollar customer. Treat the other person as though he or she is the most important person in the world. Treat them as though they were capable of buying a million dollars worth of your product or service every day. In every way, look for ways to lighten the load and help other people to do their jobs and live their lives more easily. Now, here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. 1. Make a list of the most important people in your work and business life. Develop a plan to help each person in some way. 2. Make a list of the most important people in your personal life. Determine the kind of relationship you want to have with them and what you will have to do to achieve it. 3. Identify the groups and organizations in your community and your field that it would be helpful for you to join. Phone today and arrange to attend the next meeting. Leadership and self-discipline go hand in hand. It is not possible to imagine an effective leader who lacks self-discipline, willpower, self-control, and self-mastery. The overarching characteristic of a leader is that he is in complete control of himself and every situation. There's seldom a time in history when leaders were so needed and so much in demand as today. We need leaders at every level of society, both in the profit and non-profit sectors. We need leaders in our families, businesses, places of worship, and community organizations, and especially in politics. We need men and women who take their responsibilities seriously and are willing to step forward to take command of the situation. Fortunately, leadership is learnable. Leaders are developed, usually self-developed, over time through hard work, experience, and training. As Peter Drucker once said, there may be natural born leaders, but there are so few of them that they make no difference in the great scheme of things. 
There are four stages of development in your career in business. You progress through four levels of activity and entertainment. First, you start off as an employee with limited knowledge and experience. Then, as you grow, learn and develop the ability to get results, you evolve upward and become a supervisor with responsibility for the performance and results of other people. As you continue to move up the scale of supervision, improving your ability to get things done through others from directly overseeing the work of employees, you become a manager. Someone who assigns work to people with demonstrated competence in certain areas. Managers have a larger view and this comes with greater responsibilities. As you move up the scale of management, becoming more knowledgeable and effective in getting more and better results from more and different people, you reach the highest level, that of a leader. At this stage, you are responsible for determining what is to be done rather than how it is to be done. It is said that some leaders are made, some are born, and some people have leadership thrust upon them. Leaders emerge or are promoted to deal with a situation requiring leadership ability. In its simplest terms, the role of the leader is to take responsibility for results. The primary reason that people are promoted into increasingly higher levels of leadership is that they demonstrate the ability to get the required results at each level. The ongoing question of a leader is always what results are expected of me. Clarity is essential. The main reason that some people are not promoted into greater leadership positions or perhaps they're even fired is because of failure to execute. They do not do the most important jobs expected of them, nor do they get the results demanded of them. Leaders have vision. The first quality of leadership based on 3,300 studies of leaders reviewed by James McPherson is the quality of vision. Leaders have vision. They have the ability to project forward into the future and develop a clear picture of where they want their organizations to go. They then have the ability to share this vision with others and gain others' commitment to make this vision a reality. You become a leader when you accept responsibility for results. You become a leader when you begin to think, act, and talk like a leader. You become a leader when you develop a vision for yourself and for your company, your life, or your area of responsibility. There are hundreds of books written about leadership and the importance of vision, yet they can be boiled down to a single principle. A military leader has a vision of victory from which he never deviates. A business leader has a vision of success, for the business leader has a vision of success for the business based on excellent performance too which he or she is completely committed. A leader is a standard bearer. The leader sets the standard for the organization or the department. It is not possible for anyone in the organization to have a clear vision or to aspire to a higher standard of excellence than the leader. For this reason, the leader is the role model, the one who sets the tone and the morale for everyone in the organization. The personality and influence of the leader affect everyone below him in the company, organization, or department. You cannot raise morale in a business. It filters down from the top from the leader. The behavior of the leader influences and affects the behavior of everyone else. If the leader is positive, confident, and upbeat, everyone in the organization will be influenced by his behavior and will be more confident, positive, and upbeat as well. Walk the talk. When you become a leader, you must discipline yourself to be leader, like you must walk, talk, and act the part of a leader. You become a different person with different responsibilities than a manager. When you are working your way up, you are a part of the staff or the sales team. When you become a manager, you are a part of management. This means that when you are part of the staff, your orientation is upward and sideways. But when you become a leader, your orientation is downward toward all the people for whom you are responsible. Perhaps the most important behavior of a leader is for you to discipline yourself to be a role model. Imagine that everyone is watching you and patterning everything they do and say based on your behavior. When you become a leader, you no longer have the luxury to let it all hang out. From the time you were promoted into leadership, you have a special responsibility to discipline and control your words and behaviors in such a way that you bring about the very best possible results for your organization and for other people. Set the standards. The leader sets the standards for the organization's behavior, quality of work, personal organization, time management, and appearance. In excellent organizations, the leader is the person who everyone looks up to and wants to emulate. In most cases, 
the leader works harder than others in the company. The leader appears to be more committed, more determined, more courageous, more visionary, and more persistent than anyone else. The leader sets a tone that everyone wants to emulate. The leader also sets the standard for how people are treated in the organization. When a leader greets people with courtesy, consideration, and concern, it quickly becomes known that these are the standards to which others must adhere. Set values and principles. In addition to a clear vision for the organization, the leader must have a set of values and organizing principles that guide behavior in decision making. Everyone must know what the leader and the company stand for and believe in. The job of the leader then is to articulate this vision of excellent performance within the constraints of high ethical standards at all times. He or she must walk the talk and live the values and behaviors he or she teaches. The very best standard for a leader is the golden rule. Treat others as you would have them do one to you. For example, when Jack Welch was the president of General Electric, he encouraged managers to treat each employee as if that employee might be promoted over his head sometime in the future, and he might find himself working under the person who is now working below him. This way of thinking assured that managers treated their staff with a high degree of respect and courtesy. Seven Principles of Leadership To be an effective leader, there are seven principles you must incorporate into your leadership behavior and activities. 1. Clarity This is perhaps your most important responsibility. You must be absolutely clear about who you are and what you stand for. You must be absolutely clear about your vision and where you want to lead your people. You must be absolutely clear about the goals and objectives of the organization and how they are to be achieved. Especially, you must be absolutely clear about the values, mission, and purpose of the organization and what it stands for. Everyone around you and below you must know exactly why they are doing what they're doing and what their company has been formed to accomplish. 2. Competence As the leader, you must set a standard of excellent performance for the organization as well as for every person and function in the company. Your goal must be for your company to be as good or better than your very best competitor. You must be continually seeking ways to improve the quality of your product and services to your customers. 3. Commitment The leader is absolutely committed to the success of the organization and believes completely that this organization is the best in the business or will be the best in the future. This passionate commitment to the organization and to success and achievement motivates and inspires people to do their best work and put their whole hearts into their jobs. 4. Constraints the job of the leader is to identify the constraints or limiting factors that set the speed at which the company achieves its most important goals of revenue and profitability. The leader then allocates people and resources to alleviate those constraints and remove the obstacles so it can perform as one of the best in the business. 5. Creativity The leader is open to new ideas of all kinds and from all sources. The leader is continually encouraging people to find faster, better, cheaper, and easier ways to produce excellent products and services and to take better care of customers. 6. Continuous Learning The leader is personally committed to reading, listening, and upgrading his or her personal knowledge and skills as an executive. The leader should attend additional seminars and courses to improve his or her skills and abilities. At the same time, the leader encourages everyone in the organization to learn and grow as a normal and natural part of business life. The leader provides time and resources for training and development. The leader knows that the best companies have the best trained people. The second best companies have the second best trained people and the third best companies have the least trained people and are on their way out of business. 7. Consistency The leader has the self-discipline to be consistent, dependable, reliable, calm, and predictable in all situations. One of the great comforts of business life is for an employee to know that the leader is completely consistent and reliable. An effective leader does not change from day to day. The leader is not blown in the wind by each new situation, problem, or emergency that arises. Instead, the leader is calm, positive, and confident, especially under pressure, the inevitable crisis. The only thing that is inevitable in the life of the leader is the crisis. When you rise to a position of leadership, you will experience crises repeatedly. 
Crises that are unpredictable, unbidden, and often capable of seriously damaging the organization. It is in the crisis that the leader demonstrates his competence. In times of crisis, the leader becomes calm, cool, objective, and completely in control. The leader asks questions and gathers information. The leader assesses the situation accurately and makes whatever decisions are necessary to minimize the damage or cut the losses. Great leaders discipline themselves to keep their fears and misgivings private. They do not share their concerns with their staffs knowing that this can cause confusion and loss of morale. Instead, the leader asks a lot of questions, probes deeply into a situation so that he or she understands it thoroughly and keeps his or her feelings private. As far as the members of the organization are concerned, the leader is always calm, positive, relaxed, and in complete control. No matter what is happening, self-control and leadership. There's a direct relationship between your ability to discipline yourself and your readiness to lead. It is only when you prove to others that you are in complete control of yourself that they develop the confidence to put you in a leadership position and keep you there. The leader realizes that everything he says to or about another person is magnified. The leader therefore praises and encourages people both in their presence and when they are not around. He never says anything negative that could be misinterpreted or that could demotivate or offend another person. If he has problems with someone, he addresses them privately, out of sight and earshot of anyone else. Leadership qualities. Leaders discipline themselves to plan, prepare, organize, and check every detail. They take nothing for granted. They ask questions to ensure that they have a complete understanding of a situation, problem, or difficulty. Great leaders act as if they own the entire company. They accept a high level of personal responsibility. The leader never complains, makes excuses or blames others for problems. Leaders are intensely action-oriented. They gather information carefully and they make the decisions that are necessary. They set measures and standards and hold others to them. They insist that the job be done quickly and well. Leaders rise to the top. Leaders rise to the top of an organization as cream rises in milk. When you have complete responsibility for getting results, concentrate single-mindedly on completing your most important tasks. Continually upgrade your knowledge and skills, as well as your ability to contribute value to your company. Treat other people with kindness and consideration. You urge as a natural leader as you demonstrate your ability to make an increasingly valuable contribution to your organization. People above, below, and on both sides of you will want you to be promoted into leadership and will support you when you reach that position. One of your primary aims in life is to walk, talk, act, and treat others as a leader would. Eventually, your position will be equal to your performance. The number one success factor is knowledge. In our society, the highest paid people are those who know more about what they're doing than the average person. The rule is that to earn more, you must learn more. Jim Rohn said that formal education will make you a living, but personal education will make you rich. And knowledge is becoming obsolete at a more rapid rate today than ever before, so that if you're not continually upgrading your knowledge, the knowledge that you have is because and useless I can to the body and knowledge properly learned and the practice turns into a skill our skills are mental skills mental skills are ways of thinking and thinking and making decisions and, and getting results the critical factor in knowledge and skills is always result the third success factor for moving onward and upward in your life is by developing an ever widening circle of contacts you will find that every major change in your life is accompanied by a person or persons who either opens or closes doors for you. The possibility of your achieving the best life for you will be determined by the number of people who know you and like you and who are willing to help you. In order to broaden your network of contacts, you must network continually at every opportunity. 
There seems to be a direct relationship between the number of people you know and how successful you are. Why the most important of the success factors, number four, is money. Having money in the bank gives you greater freedom and the ability to take advantage of opportunities when they come along. One of the most important things I ever learned in life is that you're only as free as your option. If you have no options, if you have to do whatever it is you're doing, you have no choice, you have no freedom. If you're stuck in a dead-end job that you can't leave because you have no money set aside, you have put a break on your potential. You have no choice but to accept whatever is being handed to you. But if you have money, they call this opportunity money. If you have money put aside, you can walk away from a bad job and you can take time to find exactly the right job for you. This idea of saving up money so that you are available to take opportunities has transformed many people's lives. The fifth of these success factors that enables you to get far more done in a shorter period of time is called simply good work habits. To achieve success in every area of your life, you have to develop the habit of highly successful, hardworking people. Foundations of good work habits can be summarized in two words, focus and concentration. To become a truly hardworking individual at work, you must be continually adjusting your lens to be sure that what you're working on is the most important thing you could be doing love it, to achieve your most important goal. Successful people understand that they must work in a straight line to get from where they are, where they want to go, without version. If you want to accomplish your goals, you must be sure that everything you do is taking you in that direction. Then develop good habits to get you there. The several benefits from learning how important task completion to source energy and enthusiasm done. When you complete an important task, you experience energy and being. Disciplining yourself to concentrate on a job until it is finished gives you a feeling of presence. Develops you into a hard-working person. Number five is honesty. Now, trust is the foundation of all relationships. When people know you and believe in you and are convinced that they can trust you to keep your word and do what you say you will do, they'll feel that they are far more likely to get the things they want through you, to get the things they want faster, sooner, and easier, and with greater certainty. Peter Levitt of the Harvard Business School said the most valuable asset the company has is reputation. It's reputation. How it is known customer. In other words, what do customers say about the company, the products, and services after they have been the rule for success in business? Get them to come to you first rather than your competitors. Get them to come to you again because they were so happy with the first experience. Get them to bring your friend. Number seven in creativity. Successful people are always uh, looking for different things, for different ideas. How we, can we do it better, faster, cheaper, more conveniently? How can we help our customers? And so on constantly looking for better ways. You know that 99% of business ideas don't work? Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? Try this, try that, try this, try that, try this, try that, and nothing seems to work. And then you start to think, wait, there's something wrong with me. No, just have to try a lot of things. Do it right, you'll eventually find the way that works. But you have to have lots and lots of ideas. Not number nine, say health-oriented. Think about your health most of the time. Remember, to be successful in our competitive world, you need a lot of energy. To have a lot of energy, you've got to eat good foods, get lots of rest, and exercise all the time. And the last thing I wanted to leave you with was we have a need for speed. You've got to move fast. Because there's no time at all for people to just coast. If you get a good idea, move quickly on it. You try something, you get feedback, they should fire. So you keep failing, and you keep failing in the forward direction. And even though it's at an unconscious level, you're getting better, smarter, and quicker, and quicker, the more you fail. The scripture that when I first heard it and read it, I just said, oh boy, that's, that's cold-blooded. He that hath no yet, and he that hath not, even that that it has shall be taken away. He that hath, the person that hath, they will get, and the person that don't have, even that, that little bit they have, don't be taken away. People without vision, there.
ambition, stubbornness, perseverance. You have those qualities, you will get. You have those qualities, you restore everything you lost and what God has not given us here, here, but power, sound, this place where you are, where I am. This place, no guts, no glory. This place. Faith not tested, can't be trusted. We need to saturate ourselves. Words that will empower us. How we live our lives, our children are watching. It will be a warning. Yeah, an example. A warning of what not to do. Therefore, taking you the whole arm of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil dick, it's our time to be actively engaged in this thing called life. I'm looking for that I'm on a, a mission. People who can hear me. You and I have come from the same call. Branches of the same tree. If my message and my method and my approach resonates me, you have a story in you. You, you like to help people. But millions of people need to hear a multitude of voices. <laughs> Allow me a chill. Bring out the greatness in yourself. Bring out the greatness in violence. It's 75. My, my goal is to find people who are hungry to make an impact. Alas. Who are hungry to learn how to use and access their power of voice. Who are hungry to live a life that will outlive their. You look at your goals. Be stubborn about you. Be stubborn. Don't give up. You will fail your way into it. A lot of people won't do that. Because a lot of people. The result of pride, pride, pride coming before fall. Get started. Do what you can. What you have. God will do what you have. I'll give you all your eyes. Say it. And that experience that you provided for when the girl hold my hand expands their vision. Activate the reticular activating system in their brain. And it, it peaks their level of awareness. And it's really a success mechanism that when you are focused, when you are focused, it allows you to see things that the masses can't see. Because they're caught up in the distractions. That's why they call this the attention economy. That's why alcoholism has increased in the United States and around the world. And the suicide rate has increased because people are focused more on their problems rather than on solutions, on what is it I need to do, who is it I need to be, and, and, and I think that the more community that are created around values, around things that you believe in, around greed, around content that can give you methods and techniques and how to create the next greatest version of yourself, around the relationships that you can build, collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships that will allow you to begin to put your success on steroids, the more events we have of that nature, we can begin to become the dominant culture rather than smaller culture. And you, you, your goal is to multiply the voices, multiply the level of consciousness and help people to know and to believe and discover the truth about themselves. When I think about your background and the experience it came from, you decided that where you were was not going to be your destiny. When you looked at yourself one day, a moment, and you said to that person that was looking back at you, this is not me. I've got you said, talk about that, that moment. You know, to be honest with you, like I've had several of those moments, as some of you who want to do what I do, want to stay. And let me share something. If there's something you want to do, Take action. Do it now. See this thing called life. We don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next. If that's something in your heart that you want to do, listen to me. Do it now.
Now, once you write this down, resilient purpose driven mindset. You want to have a resilient purpose driven mindset that will focus your mind on the goals that you want to achieve, on the things that you need to do to reinvent yourself, to rethink your life, to, to see whether or not you're on the path to becoming the next greatest version of yourself. So in order to develop that resilient, purpose-driven mindset, you, you want to listen to the messages over and over, take notes on things that jumps out for you and, and become the embodiment of it. You develop that kind of mindset and how you carry yourself and how you face this thing called life. No big deal then. But when life knocks on the door, when you go through some stuff, when you get a bad diagnosis, that's when you have to pull on your faith. That's, that's when you have to be resilient. Now, here's the other thing that's very important. You look at yourself. You want to master at least three things. Three things. Multiple streams of income. Three things. I speak. I train sneakers. And I'm an author. And I got other things. I'm expanding. It, it takes longer to wear out than to rust out. So, the goal is, is to be actively engaged in life. Raising the barn is up. Turn down the amount of time that you spend in attaining yourself, watching the tell I vision. And, and, and do things that will stimulate your thinking. It will keep you young. And so, I decided just because I'm 75, you're not going to count me out. I'm still here. I'm going to be engaged in this thing called life. Because I have not done my best work yet. After day, it's the best day of your life. Look the ways in which you can begin. To master something, learn something today that you did not know yesterday. Expand your horizon, expand your vision of what's possible for you. My high school theme was you never find out how much you know until you find out how little you know. They're going from mindset mastery, learning three things that they can master to create, create Non-performance income, there's no excuse, no excuse today for not being in the mindset of achieving something beyond that which you have already done. Life is an adventure, and this is an exciting time. You can earn money, the comfort of your home. Take advantage of this. This is something you want to learn, mindset, mastery, and skill set mastery of the internet. You have to, as you look at yourself, look at your goals, look at your dreams, not only is the resilient, purpose-driven mindset important, I want you to think about your life right now. I looked at my life and I just said, you know what? I want to do more. I will not know. I want more for myself, my family, my mother, and I want to be in charge of my own destiny. If you can understand how I felt, that just said, get it. What I was doing something that wasn't me. And I was doing something to survive. What it takes to live versus what it takes to survive are two different things. And so here's what I realized. That if you're not willing to take a chance on you, if you're not willing to learn something and reach beyond your comfort zone so that you can explore some other possibilities for yourself, you never discover the greatness that you have within yourself to do more, to have more, and to experience more. You know what I'll do? It. I'm speaking to corporations. I'm speaking to organizations. I'm speaking to different groups of people who want to be motivated and inspired then helping them to create a sense of engagement and unification even though they're separate geographically. I teach people how to use this computer to bring their personality through.
their passion and their energy through to create a significant emotional event. See, the reason I had the advantage of doing this than the average person, because I was in radio for many years. I couldn't see the people that I was talking to, and you do it after a certain period of time, you develop some skills intuitively that you know when you're connecting with people. I'm successful at this, and, and one of the top impactful speakers doing this because of my background. Do something beyond your comfort zone. Learn something new so you can see what's in you. You got some more stuff back there, but you never find out what it is if you don't test yourself. I was going seeing these people speaking everywhere, and I said, I'm going to put myself to the test. Now, write this down. The people that are going to make it now, the people that are going to take advantage of this breakthrough. Listen, we work hard for where we are right now. Don't, don't sleep this period. Now, good times, they have an expiration date. So you want to maximize this time. You want to milk this moment. You want to make your move right now. And, and one of the things that I do, and I encourage my kids to do, what I make some money, I operate like I don't have a dime. Like I don't have a dime. I, I start working hard. And this is what you have to do. The people that are going to be successful are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. What is it that most people won't do? Learn something new. They're comfortable with what they're doing now. So, learn something new. If you're not willing to learn anything new, no one can help you. But if you're willing to learn something new, like I decided to do this, no one can stop you. I'm not saying this to you to impress you, but to impress upon you that you got it like that too. You need to learn how to work for yourself from home virtually and control your own destiny. Be your own boss. Here's something else. I, I discourage you. Don't do this if you're not hungry. If you want to make it today, you got to be hungry. The 47 million people are going to lose their jobs from artificial intelligence. Millions of people have lost their jobs because of coronavirus. You think you're the only one out here? There are pe people that are desperate, want the foreclosures and evictions, lost their jobs, lost their businesses. So the people that are going to come out on top, the people that will snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, they are hungry. You got to get your hustle on. People that are hungry are the first ones there and the last ones to leave. That's why I did it. I, I wanted to make myself more valuable and, and increase my value for the operation. You have to have that kind of attitude about life. You got to be hungry. You have to get your stuff together. You averages over the being average? Doing just enough to get by? No. When I talk to people, I can ask certain questions. I can tell the hungry ones and the ones who are slackers. And they're everywhere. The pigeons. See, today, employers are looking for eagles. You go outside right now and see some pigeons. But it's going to take a minute to see some eagles. They fly high. This time requires that you invest in you. That's what I was willing to do. The people that will be successful are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. But people who are not successful have large television screens and, 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 and people who are successful have large libraries. Hello? Yeah. Hey. People who are hungry are willing to discipline themselves. They, they're willing to dedicate themselves to learn something different. See, anything can be mastered if you're willing to put in the time and put in the effort and, 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 and focus yourself on learning how to do that to make yourself stand out in the but tension economy is the attention economy.
Yeah, I make yourself stand out. You've got to operate out of the thinking of Hendrik David Thoreau. Do not go where the path may lead. Go where there's no path and leave a trail.